Hi, my name is Mitch Mitchell, and today I want to talk about the changing mores or morals or beliefs of society. You know, I have an interesting confession to make, and it's not really a confession. I was never hit by my parents as a child growing up. Just never got a spanking. Now, if I was a baby and maybe I got a pat or something, I don't know anything about it, but in my conscious life, I have never been hit by my parents. Uh, for the most part, I didn't have any reason to ever get hit by my parents. The worst thing my mother ever used to accuse me of was not keeping my room clean, and I didn't. But there were some things that I did that, you know, they weren't necessarily, you know, being bad. But I took some risks. I probably could have been killed six or seven times as a kid for things that I did. And if there had been anyone around to see that who was an adult, they might have told my parents, or if my parents had seen it, they might have been upset. And I don't know if I'd have got hit or if I'd have just got punished. But, you know, it wasn't that I ever did anything, you know, overtly wrong or, you know, criminal or anything like that. Because I always believed that one of the worst things I could ever do was bring shame to the family name. Now, this was a product of growing up in a military family, living on a military basis, having your dad be first a tech sergeant and then a master sergeant, and understanding that there were certain behaviors that were expected of you. Officers kids acted up all the time. <laughs> you know, they just did. You would think they would act better, but they didn't. Uh, but I knew better. And a lot of kids around me whose parents weren't officers knew better also. So... We had this sense of how things should go. Now, having said that, there were a lot of my friends who got beaten all the time by their parents. You know, spankings were pretty much a norm in the 60s and 70s. And they were a norm going way back in history. Uh, my dad talks all the time about, you know, they would leave the house in the morning and come back and they got a beating every night because their parents knew they had done something wrong because <laughs> he said, you know, this is just how they lived. My mother didn't get hit all that often, but she said, you know, there were a couple of times where there was something that happened and word got out because she lived in one of those communities early on where, you know, the entire community knew everything you did. And so every once in a while she had to suffer it. And I bring this up because of this thing with Adrian Peterson, the football player for the Miami Vikings. And one of the things that, you know, he had his issue with is that he, I guess, took a switch to his four-year-old. And, you know, like parents, like his parents did to him, and probably like their parents did to them, he, you know, whipped his child with this thing. But it's a different type of story because, one, he, I guess, either divorced or it's a former girlfriend or whatever who decided to take the child to the doctor. And they didn't have this great relationship anyway. So now he's up on charges in Texas, Texas of all places, of, you know, child abuse for basically disciplining his child on something that could have been dangerous. You know, it was one of those situations I was talking about where it wasn't necessarily that the kid did anything that was overtly wrong, but he did something that could have hurt him. And so Adrian wanted to, you know, make sure that the example set in his mind in the only way he knew because that's how he grew up. But we're in a society now where parents will scream at their kids in a store, calling them all kind of vile names and whatever. Yet, if they, you know, see something and they slap them on the hand or whatever, someone is going to think that's child abuse and call it in. I have no kids, so I really don't know uh, how I would react to my child doing certain things. Every once in a while, though, you know, you're thinking parents need to stand up and do something to their kids. And I often, often wonder if they're scared to do anything to their kids because they're scared that someone is going to call the cops or do something. So they would rather deal with everyone looking at them in a negative light than even discipline their kids, which is a bad thing because kids today need more discipline. And, you know, I think that back in my day, probably some kids needed more discipline than they were getting, but this is just how this is. Now, I'm doing it on this channel because let's move to business. You know, I still have my thing where loyalty is still my number one thing. It's always loyalty. Loyalty, trustworthiness, and honesty. And unfortunately, loyalty is almost gone in business. It's usually about, well, it's about the company or it's about each individual. I have seen so many CEOs tell these lies about how they have to, you know, let people go because if 
finances are bad. And all this, you know, we can't make it. And they blame it on the government or they blame it on the president or they blame it on the economy. And yet they're making $10, $20 million a year and they still get their pay. Uh, I work in healthcare, and there's a lot of healthcare administrators who make over a million dollars a year, and yet they're laying people off and they're blaming it on, you know, the economy and all these other kind of things. And it's not that at all. Uh, yeah, there, there's some things, there's probably a few hospitals that have that issue, but most of the time it's just processes aren't going right. And the thing is, they don't care to even find out. So it's it's a lie. We all know that there's almost no such thing as business being like a family. It, it just doesn't occur anymore. So you have that. You have uh, certain situations where people will tell you one thing and then you find out that's not exactly what that is. You know, I've been in business now for, geez, what is this, 13 years. And one of the things that I have learned over the years is before I accept a contract with anyone, ask questions and then ask more questions. And if I have to ask more questions after that, the reason you do that is because you start to find out that people don't always tell you everything that's going to happen. And if they get your name on a contract, they think they've got you. Now, one of the things that I usually try to do, and as a matter of fact, I've almost always done it, is I have an out clause. Right now, for instance, I'm working out of town and I have an out clause, which basically says that I can give 30 days notice and leave at any time for any reason. Now, the client also has that same right, where if there's something, whatever, they can give 30 days. If I violate policy, then there's no time whatsoever. But if they decide, you know what, we don't need you until such and such a time, they can put in 30 days. Now, the 30 days doesn't necessarily mean I have to actually be there. You know, they can say, you know what, you can go home now, but they still have to pay me for four weeks. I put that in there for my protection, but I also put it in the other way for my protection because sometimes you just get irked. And I didn't go into business for myself and I didn't get incorporated and I didn't get officially named president of my own corporation so that I have to deal with a lot of unethical behavior if I don't feel like it. So, you know, there is this, this give and take. I have learned these lessons, but there's some folks who need more time. You know, every day there's someone new who's getting into business who doesn't know that someone else is out to pretty much cheat them. And, you know, you just have to tell it like it is. I'm not going to say that that didn't necessarily happen in the past, but, you know, you, I don't know. I, I, I'm not really sure where I want to go necessarily with that particular thing. But, you know, mores really are changing. You know, we're in a world now where there's a lot more transparency, even though people don't think that there is. And word will get out. And, you know, something happened with my wife earlier tonight with someone who basically has lied to her from the beginning and tried to trick her early on. And luckily, I saw some of the things and I said, well, don't let this happen. Don't let this happen. And then those things didn't happen. And now these other people, either they lied to her or they're inept. <laughs> you get to pick one. And it just kind of makes me wonder, where have we gone where we're not really digging into these things anymore? People are afraid to ask questions. Yes, money is always a big thing, but integrity is a big thing. Protecting oneself is a big thing. Getting it right is a big thing. And if you don't ask the questions to protect yourself and do it over and over and over again, and then get it down in writing and protect yourself that way as well, then you're always going to get taken advantage of. And I hate to say this, but you're the only one who will look to protect you no one else cares. Eh, okay, I don't want to go that far with it. Someone cares. Everyone's not wrong. Everyone's not going to try to take advantage of you, but some people are. It's just the way the world is right now. That's the part I'm not sure was always how it was before, but I could be wrong. Let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think that the mores of the world, and you know, we'll just say even just the United States, are changing to the point where we really have to watch out for ourselves more. And how are you making sure that you're not being taken advantage of? Let me know. Y'all take care. My name is Mitch Mitchell.